what makes you a leader? We looked at a clip from Simon Sinek, who's a inspirational leader, motivational speaker, just a great thought partner. And we were listening to some of his clips that he played on Tom's show. And we just really wanted to share this with you and really give our commentary about what we think about his explanation on leadership. My name is Dr. J. I'm Dr. Sen. And together we're two doc minds. And so what we're going to do is show you a clip and we're going to really try to break down some of the key elements. This was a very, I thought, Cynthia, this was a very good clip that really allowed us to really understand that in-depth perception and perspective you have to have when you're a leader. What do you think? I think that um, as you look at the video, it breaks down, like you said, how you can view leadership and how leadership is uh, seen in different ways and that we all at some point can see a leader inside ourselves if we just pay attention to some of the cues. Absolutely. So without further ado, we're going to look at uh, this clip and take a few full moments to look at it and see what we have. Do you love your wife? Yes. Prove it. Like, what's the metric? Give me the number that helps me know, right? Because when you met her, you didn't love her. Now you love her, right? Tell me the day the love happened. It's an impossible question. But it's not that it doesn't exist. It's that it's much easier to prove over time, right? Well, leadership is the same thing. It's about transitions. So if you, were to, if you were to go to the gym, it's like exercise, right? If you go to the gym and you work out and you come back and you look in the mirror, you will see nothing. And if you go to the gym the next day and you come back and you look in the mirror, you will see nothing, right? So clearly there's no results, can't be measured. It must not be effective. Wow, that was very powerful statement. Uh, what we saw here is what he's trying to get in this short clip is say, how do you measure the effect of, of leadership? And he was really using, you know, uh, you know, going to the gym, you know, your relationship with a loved one. And when do you measure the effectiveness, right? Can you measure it now or, you know, how do you measure it? And he's getting to a point, uh, but I think it was a good point said on really just starting to set the stage and we'll hear a little bit more, but set the stage right on, you know, measurement of leadership. Yes. I think that he's leading us somewhere down a, um, a very important point where we have to not fall into the same traps while on going on our journey, while taking the steps to get to a certain place. And I like the, this video and how it's walking us through saying, what does it look like when you're just starting out? And I, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing more in this video about what he's talking about. All right, let's show a little bit more. So we quit, right? Or if you fundamentally believe that this is the right course of action and you stick with it, like in a relationship, I bought her flowers and I wished her happy birthday and she doesn't love me. Clearly I'll give up. That's not what happens. If you, if you believe there's something there, you commit yourself to act, an act of service. You commit yourself to the regime, the exercise. You can screw it up. You can eat chocolate cake one day. You can skip a, skip a day or two. You know, you, you, it allows for that. But if you stick with it consistently, I'm not exactly sure what day, but I know you'll start getting into shape. I know it. And the same with the relationship. It's not about the events. It's not about intensity. It's about consistency, right? You go to the dentist twice a year, your teeth will fall out. You have to brush your teeth every day for two minutes. What does brushing your teeth twice a day for two minutes do? Nothing, unless you do it every day, twice a day for two minutes, right? It's the consistency. Going to the gym for nine hours does not get you into shape. Working out every day for 20 minutes gets you into shape. So the problem is we treat leadership with intensity. We have a two day offsite. We invite a bunch of speakers. We give everybody a certificate. You're a leader, right? No, that was some sin. That was good. What that was he, a good one. I mean, that really, uh, you know, what he's trying to, under, he's trying to associate leadership mm -hmm. with what we do every day in our life. Because when you look at leadership, Sam, leadership is not a tangible thing. Mm -hmm. I can't say I'm going to go to the grocery store and pick up a, a gallon of leadership today, right? 
I'm going to pick up a loaf of leadership today, right? I'm going to eat leadership cookies today, right? That's not how it works, right? Leadership is that intangible thing that can't be touched, similar to how he says love, being in shape, you know, all those things. You know, it's just you never know that moment where it clicks, but it clicks. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think that his approach in trying to break it down to a very simplistic example where you can just understand this very complex idea of leadership. I mean, I, they have whole programs on this in so many different institutions across the United States alone where leadership is the study. And you think that you go and read a book and you take a course and you, you consume all this material and you instantly become this. But he took it to the step where this is what leadership actually looks like in your day to day life and that you can take this tool and take these steps to unveil the leadership. If you just pay attention and believe in the steps that you are taking towards this leadership. No, and you learn so much. I mean, I managed thousands of people and billions of dollars in my career. And, you know, when I first started, I thought leadership was people listening to me and me giving directions mm -hmm. and giving a vision. Mm -hmm. But, you know, going and listening to folks like Simon and other folks, you find out it's just so much more. And when you think it's about that, normally you're not going to be successful. Right. So he begins to talk a, a lot more about, you know, when do you know it and what do you know it? So do you mind if we play a little bit more? Oh, sure. <laughs> Those things are like going to the dentist. They're very important. They're good for reminding us or getting us back on track, learning new lessons. But it's the daily practice of all the monotonous, little, boring things like brushing your teeth that matter the most. She didn't fall in love with you because you remembered her birthday and bought her flowers on Valentine's Day. She fell in love with you because when you woke up in the morning, you said good morning to her before you checked your phone. She fell in love with you because when you went to the fridge to get yourself a drink, you got her one without even asking. She fell in love with you because when you had an amazing day at work and she came home and she had a terrible day at work, you didn't say, yeah, 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 but let me tell you about my day. You sat and listened to her awful day and you didn't say a thing about your amazing day. This is why she fell in love with you. I can't tell you exactly what day and it was no particular thing you did. It was the accumulation of all of those little things that she woke up one day and is, as if she pressed a button, she goes, I love him, right? Leadership is exactly the same. So my goodness, that was powerful. Enough. And he added another layer. You know, and so he added that layer and I think mm -hmm. Seth, you use this word all the time, consistency. Mm -hmm. Consistently see and showing up. Mm -hmm. Consistency and how you treat your people. Consistency and how you interact, consistency and listening, mm -hmm. consistency in your vision, right? He just really talked about, there's not one thing in consistency that works, right? And our relationship, we've been married o over two decades, right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't because of one individual thing, right? It was a consistency mm -hmm. over decades mm -hmm. that allowed that, right? Right, um, the consistency is one of the layers and I like that he added another layer about the in, the intention of you being authentic as well. That's what I heard. Um, I heard that not only do you have to show up and be consistent and do that innocuous thing every single day, but also you have to take your time and you have to actually believe it and really believe that you're giving something to somebody and giving and paying attention to somebody's needs and wants in that moment. And that's what is the components of a great leader. Yeah, and to your point, paying attention to those needs over your own, yes. right? It's not about me, mm -hmm. right? In some cases, it has to be about you. When you're leading an organization, it has to be about the one, the 10, the mm -hmm. thousand, the 10,000, the hundred thousands, the millions of people that work for you, right? Mm -hmm. Or work with you, mm -hmm. right? It has to be about them. Yes, I heard you mention uh, so many times that it's, not one person is greater than another in, in any organization. Oh, that everyone matters from the bottom up to the top to the bottom to the, you know, it doesn't matter. Everyone matters at every level. Absolutely. There's <laughs> no one person bigger than the T. Mm -hmm. And he's saying that without saying that, mm -hmm. but he's also saying some more critical things. So let's take a look. There's no event 
There's no thing I can tell you you have to do that your people will trust you. It just doesn't work that way. It's, the, it's an accumulation of lots and lots of little things that anyone by themselves is innocuous and useless. Literally, pointless by themselves. People will look at little things that are good leadership practices and say, that won't work. And you're absolutely right. But if you do it consistently, and you do it in combination with lots of other little things, like saying good morning to someone, that looking them in the eye. My friend George, who's a three-star general in the Marine Corps, he says his test for leadership, and I love this, he goes, his test for a good leader is if you ask somebody how their day is going, you actually care about the answer. The number of times we're walking to a meeting, we're rushing, we go, how are you, not good? I gotta I got get to you later, I gotta, I'm late for a meeting. If you ask the question, you are standing there and you are listening to the answer. It's those little innocuous things that you do over and over and over and over that people will say, I love my job. Not I like my job. I like my job means, yeah, the challenge is great, they pay me well, I like the people. I love my job means I don't want to work anywhere else. I don't care how much somebody else will, is willing to pay me. I'm devoted to the people here and I care desperately about the people here as if they were my family. Oh my goodness. Yeah. You know, he gave us a lot of great nuggets mm -hmm. on that one. Mm -hmm. You know, and I heard this from Warren Buffett and maybe drop a, a, a comment in the chat if you feel um, that you want us to do this piece on Warren Buffett because he does, he talked about the same thing and that same thing is the people that you work for, they have to feel like it's a family, right? Mm -hmm. They, it don't matter the money, right? It doesn't matter the position. It doesn't matter where I'm my standing at in the organization. It's about family. And that's what Warren Buffett talks about at Brokeshire Hathaway is that every employee is like family. And, you know, he rarely has turnover. Mm -hmm. Like the average person start, you know, in their career with, with their organization because they felt like it's a family. Right. And when you have that feeling mm -hmm. and you have that emotion about the work that you do when you show up every day, you give it your all. You'll run through walls for an organization. Right. You will lay your life out of the line for the organization. And that's when you know, you know, you're really at that the pinnacle of leadership, right? Yes. I think leadership is the biggest component of leadership is recognizing that there's a whole person working for you and with you at all times and to acknowledge not just part of those people as the work that they have as an output, but actually recognizing that these people have a whole different life outside of the organization. And how do you bring that holistic aspect of the, the people that you're working with to your organization and not taking away, but adding to who they are as a person that works for the organization. I think that's a challenging thing to do. And it's a good point that this video brings out is that you're recognizing how to acknowledge someone in order to bring value to your organization. And I, that's the point that I'm getting out of this video. Yeah. And when you talk about family, you know, outside of your immediate family, for those that have a uh, strong family to work with, outside of those immediate family, Right. Who are you with the most outside of them? And in most cases, that's the people at work. At work. And so if you go to work and you feel like you're with family, mm -hmm. right, you know, it's, it doesn't become a job. Right. It becomes a part of what I want to contribute. You wake up every single morning with a different intention. Absolutely. So let's hear a little bit more. Mm -hmm. In business, we have colleagues and coworkers. In the military, they have brothers and sisters. That's how they think of each other. If you really have a strong corporate culture, the people will think of each other like brothers and sisters. It's like a family, right? No. Brothers and sisters. Deep love. Fight, but the love doesn't go away. Bicker, the love doesn't go away. And I'll fight with my sister, but if you threaten my sister, you're going to have to deal with me. Right? We'll fight internally, we'll bicker with each other, but nobody's gonna hurt each other, and if anything from the outside shows up, you gotta, you're looking at a unified front. Brothers and sisters. Now, how do you create brothers and sisters out of strangers? Common beliefs, common values, you know? Parents, in other words, executives, who care about their children's success, who care to raise their children, teach them skills, discipline them when necessary, help them build their self-confidence so that they can go on and achieve something more than you could have ever imagined achieving for yourself. That's leadership. Amazing. I mean, you know, basically he talked about 
you know, being brothers and sisters. You know, he talked about the executive not only managing and, and having clear missions and visions, but that executive also talks about, you know, sometimes you have to discipline. Sometimes you have to correct and self-correct. Sometimes you're going to have difficult conversations. But when you have that trust and we're a family, we're brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. right? And no matter what conversations we have internal, when we face in someone externally, we're going to find out. My dad always told me, right? I have three brothers and one sister. He always said, right, if something happens and we're talking about it and having a fuss and arguing about ourselves, right, that's okay. But if someone comes there and inject and say something negative about us in that same manner, right, we turn around, we bond together, and we go after them. That's right. Because, because they're not our family. Right. Right. And we're, as a family, we're willing to do anything to be successful. We're willing to hold ourselves accountable. We're willing to go to bat for each other. We're willing to trust each other. And that, and that says a lot about leadership. And when you get to the pinnacle of that, right, you become one of the best leaders. And there's very few out there that can do that. Right. Right. Some people get confused, supervisor, manager, leader. Mm -hmm. a leader is like the Hall of Fame, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's levels to that. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of self-awareness, humility that you have to have to be able to get to that pin pinnacle of success. Yeah, I think that this video exhibits that and it walked us through those levels of leadership and high points of what a great leader could look like if they implement these things in their everyday life, such as like we started the video out with being consistent. Then we moved on to acknowledging people at every level. And then it rounded off leadership with, oh, these people in the organization are like my family. They're like brother and sister to the point where we, yes, we're going to have infighting, but we are going to defend each other and we're going to finish this whole vision out together because we're family and we believe in each other. So there are a lot of key points in leadership that are hit just in this one video that I think that just are great just ingredients to great leadership in, in organizations and why some organizations are more successful than others. No, I, I agree. Uh, you know, I, I would say in my career, in my journey to become the best leader, I know how to be. Um, and as I was going through the journey and growing um, before I became boss, if you will, um, I've seen very few people that lead in that blood matter. I can only remember one person in my career that I thought led in that way. <laughs> and that I thought that I would, I mean, literally, I would run through a wall for them. Wow. Um, and so I've had a lot of bosses over my lifetime and I've only saw one. So when you see that one, you know it. And when you know it, hold on, I stayed with that individual until they retired right. because they fed so much into me. They taught me so much. They cared about me as an employee that I was willing to, to do whatever to learn, but more importantly, grow in the organization. So is that something that you felt? Please put something in the comment section so that we know if that's something that you ever felt in your job. Just let us know, put yes or no, and then let us know what's going on. Yeah, to come across a great leader is very rare. In, in many corporations because the corporations are to be honest with you are are worried about the bottom line and don't necessarily give attention or resources toward just developing the individual as much as the employee so i've come across many organizations myself in my work history where you are exactly that you are an employee you show up and you create output and they barely even know your name and they barely say hi to you. They just want to ensure that you finished what you were supposed to finish that day. You have, like you said, come a great person. I remember as a leader in my life, I haven't come across that unfortunately, but also with the video that we just reviewed, it's anybody can be that. If you take the necessary steps, if you are consistently, what, lifting weights, every day even though it's five weights one week and then you add it a pound and six pounds the next week it's the it's the changes that you do not see but you are consistently investing in every single day that will build you towards being that person that you aspire to be and consistently believing that you can get get to that point even though you don't see results that's just a leap of faith 
that's just even hard to invest in. But if you believe, then that is something that you will be rewarded in. And that's what I took away from this particular leadership discussion. No, and I take away that, you know, you have to, and we're talking about transformational leadership, not transactional, right? Which a lot of people go, you do this every day and then this is what happens. But we're talking about transformational leadership. And I think that's what is critical. And it takes, again, humility. It takes a care. Um, it takes someone with a lot of vision um, to be able to do it. And I, I disagree. I don't think everyone can do it. I don't think everyone is self-aware and willing to do it. And it could be you know, something that went on in their history or their lives and different things. But I disagree. I don't think everyone can be a transformational leader. I can't tell you if you're born with it or you learned it, but I can tell you that you know, over over my career, I've, I've seen very little. And even for me as a leader, you know, I'm still developing and being the best transformational leader I could be, mm -hmm. right? And so we all have to recognize that we're still continuing to grow. I think the good thing about that and you um, not necessarily aligning your statements with mine is that we're going to have a lot of different conversations with this over the course of the Two Docs Mind. And I look forward to having more and seeing more examples of leadership. Yeah. So. Make sure you drop a comment. Let us know how you enjoyed the video. That gives us an algorithm and it gets our, our content seen. But make sure you hit that notification bell and you subscribe. We're going to keep on giving you great content and we look forward to you seeing us again. So welcome to Two Doc Minds. I'm Dr. J. I'm Dr. Sin. And we'll see you soon. Mm-hmm.